it's time for Northwestern Outdoors Radio, the award-winning show that covers fishing, hunting, and all sorts of outdoor recreation here in the great Northwest. Northwestern Outdoors is brought to you every week by Max Lure Company, a legacy of innovation since 1969, by Loophole Optics, America's optical authority, by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors, by Wallawa County, nature is on display in Northeast Oregon, and by The Real News, your fishing resource. Also by Shiloh Inns and Suites, providing you with affordable excellence. And by Mardon Resort, the place for fishing, hunting, and more in eastern Washington. And now, it's time to head outside with your host, John Cruz. I do love Montana. They call it big sky country, and yes, the sky does seem to be bigger and a little bluer than what I'm used to seeing in other places. The people I've met there are friendly and plain spoken, traits I always appreciate, and the fishing, hunting, and wildlife watching opportunities, well, let's just say they're hard to beat. We are heading back to Montana this week, and our first stop is going to be the Lee Metcalf National Wildlife Refuge near Stevensville. This is a place that's easy to get to, but has a whole lot to offer. There's hunting, there's trout fishing, there's nature trails to walk, and oh yes, a whole bunch of wildlife to see too. Bob Danley with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service at the refuge will be joining us to tell you more about it. We'll be talking fishing tackle again with Lance Murs on an extended Max Minute, and then we'll get a chance to chat again with Chuck Robbins. He's got a new book out called Birding Trails Montana. Chuck's going to share some of his favorite places to see birds and other wildlife in the western and central parts of the state. And we'll tell you not only about what's inside this great book, but also how you can get your hands on it. Speaking of getting your hands on something, we are giving away a pair of Leupold BX1 McKenzie binoculars. These binos have all the quality you would expect for Leupold, but it's available at a price that won't break the bank. Shane Mizell with Leupold is going to tell you more about these great binoculars and will give you some tips that will help you see more birds and have better luck scouting for game in our hunting preseason. In fact, you can enter to win this pair of binoculars right now. That's right, we're giving a pair away. Simply contact us through our website at northwesternoutdoors.com or through our Facebook page at Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Just let us know what station you're listening to and you're entered to win. We'll contact one lucky winner after our last broadcast on Sunday. Again, that's northwesternoutdoors.com on the web. Just go to our contact page or Northwestern Outdoors Radio on Facebook. In addition to this, we've got fishing reports, outdoor news, and Labor Day weekend events from other areas around the Northwest. But before we travel any further into Montana, it's it's time for another edition of Sportsman Spotlight, brought to you every week by Shiloh Inn & Suites, the hotel chain that lives up to its motto of affordable excellence. This week, David Sparks cautions you and your pets to be careful when recreating in wolf country. Sportsman beware, David Sparks with Sportsman Spotlight. Beef rancher Tom Blessinger lost his great Pyrenees named Chisholm on a trail near Sage Hen Hill in Idaho. The culprits were a small group of wolves, Tom thinks maybe three or four. The reality is that the dog was tagging along on a trip into the forest and was only about a hundred feet behind Tom and a forest manager on their ATVs. Tom's cautioning anyone who's in wolf country to be extra careful. One on one, my dog could kill a wolf because that's what they're bred for. But we know there was at least two and from the tracks, the trapper thought there was three or four. And uh, at that time, well, the trapper said, well, I'll try to get that helicopter and see if we can't get the culprits. Well. Two days before, the wolves had got into a band of sheep over by Idaho City, and they killed 200 sheep, and they took the helicopter and they killed about four wolves. Well, some bright soul calls Washington, D.C. and raises hell about killing the poor wildlife, so they shut the helicopter down, and we couldn't get it. So the trapper set out some traps. This was in 20 feet of the main road, and so then I'd start telling people about it because it's kind of a dangerous deal because... There's lots of pickups and campers go up that road going fishing, boating, or just camping. And a lot of them stop going up the road to let their kids out of the pickup to go to the bathroom behind a bush. This is David Sparks for Sportsman Spotlight. Confused by so many national brand hotel reward programs? 
blackout dates, expiration dates, different points for different hotel rewards, and gimmicks. At Shiloh Inn Suites Hotels, it's simple. No blackout dates for any rewards stay. If we have a room available, it's yours. Hi, I'm Mark Hemstreet, owner of Shiloh Inns. As a rewards member, you'll receive free room upgrades, a dedicated personal agent to help book your stay, points that don't expire, points that can be used for free nights at any one of our beautiful hotels or donations to your local school or free airline tickets, and much more. And as a special bonus, you'll earn 100 free bonus points just for signing up. From your very first stay, you receive free Wi-Fi, free breakfast at most locations. The kids stay free. We don't charge ridiculous resort or parking fees. And we're dog-friendly. Shiloh Inns, affordable excellence. American-owned and proud of it. The road is calling you to experience one of Oregon's seven wonders, the Wallawas. So grab your family and spend some time exploring Northeast Oregon's Wallawa County. Visit the State Park at the head of Glacier Carved Wallawa Lake. Travel the Hell's Canyon Scenic Byway. Feel the pioneer spirit. Nez Perce history and see our western arts and bronzes. Ascend to the top of Mount Howard on the tram and you'll see why Wallowa County is one of Oregon's most scenic and adventurous vacation wonders. This summer, take the road that leads to wonders. It begins at WallowaCountyChamber.com. This is Commissioner of Public Lands Peter Goldmark. Whether you live on the west or east side of the Cascades, dry weather means greater risk of wildfire. Please respect burn bans and completely put out campfires. Get more information at dnr.wa.gov. You're back with Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about bird watching in the great state of Montana. And we've got the perfect person to do it with. It's Chuck Robbins. He's the author of a brand new book, Birding Trails Montana, published by Sand Hill Crane Press. Chuck, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, John. I'm uh, good to be here. Chuck, this is a hefty book, and there's lots of pictures, lots of maps, lots of color. How many birding locations are there that you're covering in Big Sky Country? It describes about 240 major sites, and then with some of the sites, there's you know some little added sites that somebody might go to nearby or something like that, but basically 240 sites divided into the six tourism regions throughout the state. Well, and, and I love that. Folks, if you're not familiar with that, go to visitmontana.com, and you'll see the state of Montana, their tourism bureau, basically divides the state into, into six sections from west to east. There's Glacier Country, there's Central Montana, Yellowstone Country. And so having this book broken down the same way makes it really easy. Now, what I like about this book, Chuck, is, again, number one, you got lots of pictures, you got lots of maps, you got GPS coordinates, which is very helpful. And then you just got, you know, it's not a real wordy book. It's kind of like you, Chuck. I've known you for a while. You're not a real wordy guy either. It just kind of breaks down what you need to know if you're a bird watcher. Yeah, we, we tried to focus, you know, solely on just the idea of, of a person uh, picking up the book and saying, you know, I want to go bird watch and say in the Great Falls area and they can look on the map, find Great Falls and there's a bunch of numbers there that are close by and they can go and read about those sites and maybe there's a special bird at one of those sites that they're interested in and so they can head out there and we try to give them uh, Besides GPS coordinates, we try to give them, you know, really easy driving directions. And I, I think it's worked out pretty well. Oh, I agree completely. And again, folks, each section basically has that GPS coordinate, tells you where it's located at. It has the key birds you're going to see there, the best season to go see these birds, and then just a brief description of the area. There's directions as well and further contact information if you want to dig deeper into some of these areas in terms of websites and phone numbers. So, Chuck, I want to go ahead and, and kind of tie you down today, so to speak, into some of your favorite places that you like to go bird watching at because you've gotten to see all of them in Montana. We'll start off with, with western Montana. You know, when we're talking about the Flathead or Bitterroot Valley, is there a place that stands out for you as a great place to go bird watching in that area? For me, one of the best places in the whole state is the Lee Metcalf National Wildlife Refuge just outside of Stevensville, which is beside the Bitterroot River. It just has it all. It has songbirds, waterfowl, raptors, waterbirds, shorebirds, and all. I think there's something over 230 species that's been observed there so far. Gets a variety of wildlife, deer, elk, moose, river otters, 
it's just really hard to beat. You know, it's easy on, off the road. You know, you just go through Stevensville and out of side road, and you're there. And there's walking trails and and uh, driving trails, and I mean, it just has it all. And it's in a beautiful place because you can see the Bitterroot Mountains, you know, on one side. And well, you aren't kidding about that, Chuck. And, and it's funny you mentioned that. You must have gotten uh, the insider preview of our show because we're actually heading to the Lee Metcalf National Wildlife Refuge later in this show. And we're going to tell you more about that, folks. Anywhere else you like over in, like, maybe the Flathead Valley that stands out for you? Of course, when you're up the Flathead, you know, you're almost a glacier, you know, and there's another great birding spot, you know. There's even more birds have been observed there than at uh, Lee Metcalf. It has hard-to-find birds like the harlequin duck and pretty easy to find in, in glacier, and you can go up on uh, going to the Sun Road and sure. and uh, get up high there, and you can find, you know, willow ptarmigan, and there's a ton of raptors and songbirds and, you know, just everything there. And again, you're in a beautiful place. You know, wall-to-wall mountains, lots of wildlife, grizzly bears to pikas to, you know, river otters again, you know, and all just all kinds of stuff to see up there. Heading over the Going to the Sun Road and heading east from Glacier National Park, Shelby, Great Falls area, we got some stations up there. Is, is there anywhere you direct those listeners to go to maybe get well, some the, good bird watching? The one, that comes to, the one that comes to mind first, and I imagine with everybody, is Freeze Out Lake. Sure. Which... Uh, by the way, uh, not everybody realizes, but uh, freeze and freeze out is spelled without an E. And uh, its name, it's actually, it got its name from a popular card game that the old time cowboys once played to while away the cold winters. It's a, kind of an interesting tidbit. But the, the reason freeze out so special is the spring migration is just one of the greatest bird spectacles that I know of anywhere in North America. On any given day, you might find 300,000 snow geese there. Wow. And tens of, tens of thousands of, you know, other water birds. And, and then, of course, it has a huge population of, of uh, songbirds and uh, raptors and game birds and, you know, just has it all. You don't see a whole lot of wildlife there. You know, there, there's there's stuff there, you know, like you see mink and, and uh, muskrats and Oh, I don't know, skunks and deer and that kind of thing, but you know, it does, doesn't have it doesn't have the uh, you know the elk or the moose or anything like that. But boy, it sure got birds. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, as for the skunks, I enjoy seeing them, but at a distance, at a great distance, I enjoy seeing skunks. And that, o- over over by Shelby is another great area. The Sweetgrass Hill, just outside of Shelby, not just a few miles outside of Shelby, is another place. There are a lot of potholes up there, so it gets a lot of waterfowl which in that country most people don't think of seeing, you know, because they think of it being, you know, more out in the plains. Right. But the Sweetgrass Hills has a lot of water, gets a lot of waterfowl. There's lots of sharp-tailed grouse up that way, so there's leks you can visit in the springtime. Hungarian partridge are common up there. And again, you know, raptors, galore, golden eagles, and and owl, and whatever that lives in, in Montana lives in that country. Well, Chuck, believe it or not, we are already running out of time. And, folks, we're just scratching the surface. So if you can't get the book immediately, there's four places for you to go. Sweetgrass Hills, Freeze Out Lake, Glacier National Park, and the Lee Metcalf National Wildlife Refuge. All great places to go. But to find out more, again, 240 birding locations. If you were to just go visit one a week, this book is going to last you, what, six years right there. Go ahead and oh, find, yeah. you know, Birding Trails Montana, where can people buy this, Chuck? It's available on Amazon, and it's available at uh, most of the leading bookstores uh, throughout Montana and even throughout the country, actually. Is it just a print book, or can you also get it as an e-book and download it onto your Kindle? You can you can get it as a Kindle book on, on Amazon. Okay. You can uh, get it from from the publisher, Wilderness Adventures Press, which is uh, a Sandhill Crane Press, is the imprint of Wilderness Adventures Press. All right. And then, and the phone number there is 866-400-2012. 
Or you can just go to the website of wildadbpress.com. That's wildadbpress.com for Wilderness Adventures Press. Or go to amazon.com and you can go ahead and order the hard copy book. Or I should say it's actually a soft cover. You can order the book. That's almost 500 pages. Or you can download it onto your Kindle. That's Birding Trails Montana, written by Chuck Robbins. Great resource for birding in big sky country. Chuck, thanks for telling us all about this on Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Well, you're quite welcome. And thank you, John, for having me. Leupold has been building optics in Oregon since 1907, and Leupold binoculars bring excellent optical performance and modern styling to the serious outdoorsman. Whether you're a boater, birder, backpacker, or hunter, Leupold's state-of-the-art binocular lines are sure to fit your needs. From the Poro Prism Yosemite series to the the top-of-the-line McKinley Roof Prism, Leupold has a product that is perfect for the passions you pursue. Visit Leupold.com or your local Cabela's, Bymart, or Sportsman's Warehouse to see the full line of Leupold optics. Need to get away? Then head to Mardon Resort in sunny central Washington. The fishing's awesome, wildlife is everywhere, and Mardon is the perfect place to swim, boat, and soak up the sun. When the day is done, hang out at the beach bar and grill or head to your tent, RV, hotel room, or fabulous park cottage. Call 1-800-416-2736 to book now. That's 1-800-416-2736 for Mardon Resort. Yeah, you, the guide, outfitter, or outdoors business owner who's listening to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Have you ever thought of becoming a sponsor of our show? We've got local sponsor opportunities at all 50 of the stations. They carry Northwestern Outdoors every week, and we've got some network opportunities too. If the outdoors is your business, we can help you with your advertising needs. Contact me, John Cruz, through our website at northwesternoutdoors.com. That's northwesternoutdoors.com, helping you get the word out about your outdoors company. We're back with John Cruz on Northwestern Outdoors Radio. It's time again for another Max Minute Fish On. Brought to you every week by Max Lure Company. With us again, Lance Murs with Max Lure Company. Lance, everyone's out there after salmon this time of year. People are starting to think steelhead. But let's not forget trout. Because trout is probably the biggest fishery for anglers throughout the Northwest, especially in all these lakes that we have here. What do you suggest people use, and what are a couple places we might send people to to use these lures? Well, a lot of times you want to change things up. And everybody, of course, knows about the Max Lure Wedding Ring. Well, we've kind of lowered the presentation of that, and it's called the Max Lure Wedding Ring Pro. And the Wedding Ring Pro gives it a smaller presentation than the normal wedding ring. It comes in six different colors and either a size six or an eight hook with a a 0.8 smile blade. It's great for catching panfish, perch, at like uh, Fish Lake in North Central Washington. You could also do this at Merwin Lake for trout or kokanee. It's fantastic. Well, it is definitely downsizing. Sometimes, folks, that's what it takes, especially with heavy pressured fish, is you need to downsize that presentation. So the Wedding Ring Pro, again, it's got a smaller smile blade, fewer beads, only one hook instead of two, but still, it operates the same way as a normal wedding ring spinner, and sometimes downsizing is going to get you better results. So I'm assuming you fish this either behind some weight or behind a flasher or even behind a dodger for success. You can. Take a couple of split shot weights on it, and you can cast it out and have a great effect. Sometimes less is more, and that's all you need. I agree completely. So whether you use it in places like Lance suggests, like Fish Lake in Central Washington or Lake Merwin in southwest Washington, or maybe some other waters like Offutt Lake over in southwest Washington, or maybe Timothy Lake over in northwest Oregon, Lake Como in the Bitterroot Valley of Montana, or even Lake Pond and Cascade Lake in Idaho. All great places to use the Wedding Ring Pro and other products as well from Max Lure Company. Find out more about them at your local sporting goods store or online at maxlure.com. More habitat equals more wildlife. Pheasants Forever is working hard every day to ensure there's more wildlife habitat for the future. Join the Habitat Leader and help create wildlife habitat in your community. To join us, go to pheasantsforever.org. 
For 25 years, The Real News has been covering the Northwest fishing scene. Written for anglers by anglers, The Real News does not shy away from the tough issues. You can pick up your copy of The Real News at select sporting good retailers or have it mailed to your home. Just go to therealnews.com for details. As an added bonus, let them know what radio station you heard this ad on when you subscribe and you'll get a vinyl Real News fish sticker valued at $6 as a special gift. Subscribe today at therealnews.com. That's the sound you hear when a fish hits the new sonic bait fish from Max Lure Company. This metal lure can be cast, trolled, or jigged, and will catch just about anything that swims in the sea, the river, or the lake. The sonic bait fish has a unique vibration and flutter that can be rigged in seven different ways. With all sorts of eye-catching colors and weights available, you'll be reaching for the sonic bait fish as your go-to lure. It's the sonic bait fish. Only from Max Lure Company. You're back with Northwestern Outdoors Radio. We're broadcasting today from the Lee Metcalf National Wildlife Refuge in Montana's Bitterroot Valley, about a half an hour south of Missoula. This is an idyllic place to be broadcasting from. You probably hear some birds in the background. We're actually sitting outside the visitor center and about, oh, 10 yards away from me, there's several Colombian ground squirrels. You might hear them peep occasionally while we're talking. There's a pond in front of me. There's some puddle ducks that are feeding. There's other ducks that are trading back and forth. An osprey just landed in the pond and nailed a fish and is bringing it back to its roost. This is a wonderful place and it's all overlooked by the Bitterroot Mountains. And with us here to tell us more about this great place is Bob Danley with the Lee Metcalf Wildlife Refuge. Thanks for sharing this wonderful place with us, Bob. You're welcome. Hey, I would second everything you just said. It is a wonderful place to work. The refuge was established in 1964. So you're visiting during a 50th anniversary year for us. And we get about 150 to 170,000 visits annually. About 2,000 of those visits are related to hunting and fishing. We do get a lot of wildlife watching also because we have about five miles of trails. And we have a county road that bisects the refuge in which people can drive through and stop and look at their leisure. I want to go ahead and talk about the the wildlife watching first. And I guess we got to uh, say one more thing about the refuge. How big is this place exactly? It's it's not huge, but there sure is a lot in here. You're right. It's 2,800 acres, which is a fairly small amount of acreage for a, for a refuge. You know, Bob, one thing I really like about this refuge is it's well, it has different dimensions to it is probably the best way to put it. You have your classic waterfowl habitat in terms of ponds and ducks and the shorebirds and the raptors that you're used to seeing at a lot of the National Wildlife Refuges. But you also have stands of ponderosa pine and black cottonwood and, well, at least a half mile of frontage along the Bitterroot River where there's even some trout fishing to do, too. So go ahead and throw in some trails like you said on top of that and you got a lot going for you. Let's go ahead and start off with the wildlife watching because just in the short visit that we've had here today, I've been really impressed by the number of mammals, the number of birds in terms of both raptors and waterfowl and songbirds, like those classy cedar waxwings that we've been able to see today. There's a whole lot of people that I'm seeing that are coming out here just for the bird watching and wildlife watching. What are some of the things that people really like to see out here? Well, we have roughly 247 species of birds that have been detected over the history of the refuge, which is a pretty good amount and of course you can't find them all the time you know it depends on seasons or time of the day right now we're having a really a beautiful stretch of weather where it's like 70 degrees and you could come and even at uh, middle of the day you can still hear birds basically at the end of the breeding season still singing to a degree however if it was 90 degrees i can't say that would be the truth but uh, again uh, we do have other things to look for beyond just birds when we have a roughly 50 species of butterflies that use the refuge i believe if you visit you know you're going to find you'll you'll have an opportunity to do what you want to do we do manage for six uh, wildlife dependent activities that's hunting fishing wildlife observation wildlife like photography, environmental education, and interpretation. And I think we do a pretty good job of providing all those things in a really high quality. Visitor Center is open seven days a week right now, thanks to volunteers, That meaning Sunday is when they are, they're staffing the center. 
Let's go ahead and talk about something else, Bob. Again, we've, we've been talking about the wildlife watching, and this really is a good place. Even If you're disabled, you can actually do it from a car and have a good experience here. If you are in better shape, though, you might want to consider riding a bike. Wildfowl Lane is a wonderful place to go ahead and ride a bike or drive your car slowly and see a whole bunch of wildlife. There's two different trails that you can take. There's the Kenai Nature Trail right by the visitor center that's a nice trail to see some wildlife and some of the ponds out here, especially waterfowl and raptors. Or you can head towards the river. There's a couple of interpretive and nature trails there as well. And on one of them, you're going to get right to the Bitterroot River where you can actually do some fishing. And by the way, the fishing's not bad. Caught a nice 13, 14-inch cutthroat myself and released it just a couple of hours ago. Do you have very many people who come here for the trout fishing on the Bitterroot? We had a couple of volunteers a couple of years ago who read all about the fishing in the Bitterroot River. And I asked them after their uh, summer of service was over, well, how does it rain? and they said it was everything and more and we're talking about the fishing. For sure you can bank fish in the wildlife viewing area as you pointed out but again I think uh, the really the hot spots or the lunkers are is there is a section to the north of the wildlife viewing area before you go under the bridge where it was rip-wrapped by the Corps of Engineers back in the late 50s using automobiles and that's kind of a, a, a deep hole where a lot of lunker trout hang out so hopefully when you folks do come and visit and if fishing is your forte that you can head over to that spot and and maybe uh, get lucky with that little bit of information. One other thing I want to talk about, and folks, there's so much more that we're just skimming over the surface on, uh, including disabled access. There is actually disabled access for hunters at this place. There's a, a place that you can get in that's very easy to get to right off Wildfowl Lane. But you also have other waterfowl hunting available too, don't you? Why don't you go ahead and briefly explain how that works here at the refuge? Our waterfowl hunting season starts with a a youth weekend, I mean, and then the first week in October is really when the waterfowl season kicks off. Uh, We have about 14 blinds in an area that's dedicated. We call it the waterfowl hunt area. Um, It's very simple to use. You basically sign in and sign out. And we do have a brochure in which you can access uh, via our webpage. And from there, there are links to a PDF document that you can download, which is our hunting and fishing brochure or you can swing by the the visitor center and pick it up yourself again there's about 14 blinds about a thousand visits for waterfowl hunting on average and uh, we have about a thousand visits for deer archery so uh, i think in many cases this is the closest spot to really waterfowl hunt for quite a distance without having to go to uh, an iconic place like freeze out lake which is a couple hours away so i don't think we cater to really out-of-state people but if you're in the neighborhood i would suggest coming to the weekends we also i think have posted online uh, statistics from previous years to help guide you in your selection of what blind to take you know which ones are the hot ones which ones maybe aren't as successful. So Bob, let me ask you another question here. When it comes to the blinds, the 14 blinds, is it a first come first serve? Is it a reservation in advance or is it a lottery that happens here every morning at the visitor center? You know, that's a real good question. The uh, Basically, the opening weekend is, is a lottery, just the Saturday and Sunday, and then thereafter, it's first come, first serve. So it's, it's, really, it's really worked well in the past, and we don't see anything changing from then. You're welcome to come to the drawing for an opportunity. However, the opening weekend can be not as hot as you might imagine. And it's typical when the the first cold fronts come through is that really that's when you want to be out in a blind. Bob, let me ask you another question. Early season, then later season waterfowling. Are we talking mallards as the primary species that people are getting here or something else? No, I think uh, mallards are the primary species. It's the most abundant species, and it's the one that most hunters really want to harvest. We are running out of time, but folks, if you're looking for a National Wildlife Refuge that's easy to get to, offers a spectacular setting with wonderful wildlife viewing, good opportunities for trout fishing, and a really good chance to go ahead and bag waterfowl or deer in the fall, the Lee Metcalf Wildlife Refuge is the place for you. Just go ahead and Google it, Lee Metcalf National Wildlife Refuge on your internet search engine. You'll go ahead and find plenty of links that'll get you here to the website and make it a point to visit here. This is a fantastic place, and thank you so much again, Bob, for sharing it with us on Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Thank you.
You demand quality performance from your binoculars, whether you use them in the field, on the water, or at a stadium. But you don't want to spend a fortune. That's where the BX McKenzie binoculars from Leupold come in. These armored, waterproof binoculars are both comfortable and dependable. Look for your McKenzie binoculars at quality sporting goods retailers near you to include your Cabela's, Sportsman's Warehouse, or Northwest Bymart stores. BX McKenzie bringing your world into sharper focus only from Leupold. Yeah, you, the guide, outfitter, or outdoors business owner who's listening to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Have you ever thought of becoming a sponsor of our show? We've got local sponsor opportunities at all 50 of the stations that carry Northwestern Outdoors every week, and we've got some network opportunities too. If the outdoors is your business, we can help you with your advertising needs. Contact me, John Cruz, through our website at northwesternoutdoors.com for more information. That's northwesternoutdoors.com, helping you get the word out about your outdoors company. You're back with Northwestern Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. It's time again for news and reports from the field. Brought to you every week by Mardon Resort at Eastern Washington's Potholes Reservoir. There's always something going on there. And the next event coming up is the Dock Tournament taking place at Mardon between the 12th and 14th of September. If you don't have a boat, this is a lot of fun because here's how it works. It goes on for basically three days, two nights. And if you catch the biggest fish of any species or the second biggest fish, you are are in the money. So you can go ahead and catch the biggest perch, the biggest walleye, the biggest bass, the biggest carp even, and you can go ahead and win cash. Stick around for the apple pie social that takes place at the end of the tournament too. And if you do have a boat and one of the two of you is over 40 years old, you can fish the old farts bass tournament on Sunday the 14th too. It's a fun little bass tournament. Last year, the winning catch was about 20 pounds. It was caught and released. And if you think you can do that, you might want to compete. That's MardonResort.com. Check out the website and find out more about both the Old Parts Bass Tournament and the Mardon Dock Tournament coming up soon. Another reminder about those loophole binoculars that we're giving away this weekend. We're going to tell you more about them in just a couple of minutes, but if you want to enter to win a pair of these BX1 McKenzie binoculars, you can do so right now by going to our website, northwesternoutdoors.com, or going to our Facebook page at Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Just let us know what station you're listening to, and you are entered to win. One lucky winner is going to win a pair of these binoculars at the end of the show. Again, that's northwesternoutdoors.com or our Facebook page at Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Our top news story this week comes from Olympia, where Washington Fish and Wildlife Director Phil Anderson has decided to step down at the end of the year, ending a nearly six-year tenure as director. In Anderson's words, deciding when to move on is a difficult decision, but after 20 great years with the department, the time is right for me to step aside. I will leave knowing that the talented people I have the privilege to work with here at WDFW are fully capable of taking on the challenges that lie ahead. Anderson has guided the agency through several years of deep budget cuts and has recently come under fire from anglers and the Coastal Conservation Association for his handling of a lawsuit against the agency that targeted steelhead hatchery operations in western Washington. Prior to becoming director of this agency, Phil ran a charter boat out of Westport, Washington. The boat was the Monte Carlo, and I have fond memories of fishing with Phil, who was a friend of my father about 25 years ago. Phil also enjoys bird watching and hosted trips on his boat for that as well. Hopefully, he'll find time for both fishing and bird watching after he goes home at the end of the year. We wish you the best, Phil. In Idaho, the Fish and Game Department reports an adult male grizzly bear was euthanized on August 10th after it repeatedly killed livestock in Island Park. Greg Lazinski with Idaho Fish and Game says the decision was made to put down the bear after it was trapped because once they learn to key in on a specific food source, it is highly likely they will continue the behavior even if moved to other locations. In other news, you never know what you're going to see in the salt water. From the Associated Press, we learn a young woman crabbing in Puget Sound near Edmonds recently found that out when she photographed a 25-foot-long basking shark. These big sharks are a very rare sight in the Northwest, but according to federal fisheries biologist Heidi Dewar, who verified what kind of shark this was, there are a few swimming around the sound. So keep your eyes out for some really big fish. 
Speaking of fish, we got some fishing reports from you. From the Oregonian, we learned rogue river fishing has been pretty good the first half of August. Anglers trolling Rogue Bay had some spectacular days catching salmon the first week of the month, and some of the Chinook should be making their way upstream now. Steelheading has been mediocre on the Middle River due to warm water temperatures, but if those temperatures lower, fishing around Grants Pass for both Chinook and Steelhead should improve in a hurry. If you can't wait to go fishing for Steelhead, head up to the Upper Rogue where the bite has been better as of late. Another place to go to catch salmon this month is the north part of Puget Sound. According to the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, summer and fall Chinook salmon returns to Puget Sound are expected to total nearly 283 fish, which should give anglers good fishing all the way into autumn. In addition, in addition to these Chinook salmon, in addition to these Chinook salmon, Ryan Lathrop, a fisheries biologist with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, says an additional 873,000 wow Puget Sound coho are expected to return this summer, and they typically start to show up in August. If you live in northeastern Washington, you can catch salmon too, but they're a lot smaller. According to Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife biologist Bill Baker, kokanee have been biting on the lower end of Lake Roosevelt. Another place to try this month for kokanee is Loon Lake in Stevens County. Baker says most anglers there are fishing during the nighttime hours with glow hooks and other gear, but trolling with downriggers during the day should also be good. Next on Northwestern Outdoors Radio, we told you earlier in the show we were going to be giving away a pair of loophole binoculars, and I've actually got them in my hand. It's the BX1 McKenzie binocular. It's an 8x42 binocular, and with us here to tell us more about them from loophole is Shane Meisel. Shane, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Glad to be here. Shane, this is an entry level binocular from loophole, but it sure doesn't feel like it. This is a quality set of binoculars. Tell our listeners more about it. They are a quality set of binoculars. You know, we call them an entry level based on the price point, but the performance that they're getting is far above and beyond what they're paying for. These BX1 McKenzie binoculars are uh, 100% waterproof. They're backed by the loophole gold ring warranty. They have BAK4 prisms, which means you're going to get a bright, crisp, clear image, fully multi-coated lenses, really all the bells and whistles that you would expect from a loophole binocular, but at a, at a really nice price point to get you started. You know, it, it does come with those covers for the glass. It also uh, comes with a nice case that you can put on your belt. But what I really like about these binoculars, I mean really like, is they're very compact. I mean, it's an 8x42 binocular. I'm used to something of, of this magnification being a lot bigger, but this fits in the hands very comfortably, and, and you literally could put this on your belt, no problem. You could. You know, we spend a lot of time trying to make sure that the ergonomics of this were optimized. Yeah, it's only 5.8 inches long and it weighs 22.1 ounces. So less than six inches long and less than a pound and a half, you can you can really put it there right on your pocket and, and carry it with you wherever you want and not have to worry about it being too cumbersome. Now, folks, if you want to win this pair of binoculars, here's what you do. You can go ahead and go to our Facebook page at Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Let us know what station you're listening to and say you want the loophole binoculars or do the same thing on our website at northwesternoutdoors.com. Go to the contact page. Again, just tell us what station you're tuning into. Tell us you want to win the loophole binoculars. One lucky person is going to win them at the end of this show. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about using binoculars for wildlife watching, you know, both whether it be bird watchers out there or maybe some of those bear hunters that are out there right now looking for that Bruin to go ahead and bag or people that are starting to do preseason scouting for deer or elk or something else. You know, let's go ahead and give some tips and I guess we'll start off with best time of day to be out there looking for wildlife. Well, the best time of day to be out there looking for wildlife is going to be in your crepuscular hours there at dawn or at dusk. That's when they're really going to be moving around and you're going to have the best opportunity to see your elk or your deer or your bear. I've actually found, you can find the bear out there sun themselves anytime during the day. I actually generally come upon them uh, walking down a road more than anything. But those early morning or, or late evening hours are, are when you're going to have the best opportunity to see some animals. And then because of that, you're going to make sure you need a pair of optics that is going to transmit light and give you enough light to your eye so that you can see 
all the way up until that last minute. Now, if you're visiting a wildlife refuge, you know, we were, we were talking to some folks earlier in the show about the Lee Metcalf National Wildlife Refuge. And in a situation like that, you can literally just kind of drive around and go from point to point. If, if you're a hunter, though, or if you're looking for a specific bird or animal you've heard about, you're going to want to be in place at dawn or at dusk. But let's talk about using the binoculars themselves. You know, any tips for using these to get the best view of the animal or the bird? Yeah, absolutely. My recommendation is always get the magnification that you can hold steady. So a lot of people like to try to get the largest magnification possible. Right. However, they can't hold the binoculars steady either because their hands shake or just their breathing or your heart rate. You're never going to be able to see a crisp image through those binoculars because you're not holding them steady enough to view them unless you're going to put them on a tripod. So I generally actually get eight power binoculars because that's what I can hold steady. Anything above that gets to be a little too shaky. And the image quality is better and I can see more because I'm able to hold my image still. And fortunately for you folks, these binoculars are 8x42, so it's going to be perfect for that. One other thing before we go, the VX1 McKenzie, what is the price point on this set of binoculars? Again, very, very sturdy, compact set of binos, but I understand it's a lot cheaper than anything else in your line. It really is. And you know, we do not set the pricing on our binoculars. We have a suggested retail price of $189.99. Okay. Uh, but I've seen those online for or $125, $140. So, you know, your best bet is to go to your local retailer as they'll set the price there. It's going to be far less than what our manufacturer recommendations are. So, again, you've got a chance to win a $189 pair of binoculars for free through us at Northwestern Outdoors. But if you don't win them, don't despair because you can get this set of binoculars for a very low price anywhere from, you know, around $140 or less at your local retailer or online. It's the Loophole. BX1 McKenzie Binoculars. Let's give folks the website for Loophole before we go, Shane. That'll be www.loophole.com. Loophole.com. Loophole, America's optical authority. Shane, thanks for coming back and telling us all about these binoculars and giving us some good tips for wildlife watching, too. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Looking for the ultimate cooking machine for your backyard or patio? Look no further than Camp Chef's new pellet grill and smoker. With user-friendly features like an auto ignition, digital readouts, and internal meat temperature sensors, it's easy to smoke the tastiest salmon, ribs, brisket, and turkey you'll ever eat. And an innovative system makes cleanup a snap. Everyone will want the food you're cooking on your Camp Chef pellet grill and smoker. The quality smoker that's second to none. Find out more at CampChef.com. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. We're back with one last cast from John Cruz on Northwestern Outdoors Radio. You're running out of time if you want to enter to win that pair of Leupold BX1 McKenzie binoculars we're giving away this weekend. All you have to do is go to our website, northwesternoutdoors.com, or to our Facebook page at Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Like us on the Facebook page, and then just tell us what station you listen to our show on. That's all you need to do, and you'll be entered to win. We're going to give away this pair of binoculars at the end of the show to one lucky listener. That's northwesternoutdoors.com or Northwestern Outdoors Radio on Facebook. In terms of upcoming events, Morning Dove season opens up September 1st across the bulk of the Northwest, and so does grouse hunting, except for Idaho, where hunters can start going after these upland birds on August 30th. I always love this first bird hunting opportunity of the season, but if you go, remember to bring lots of water for both you and your dog. If you enjoy fly fishing, you might want to drop by Ennis, Montana next weekend for their annual fly fishing festival on the Madison River. There's going to be competitive events, seminars, tackle displays, lots of vendors, guest speakers, entertainment, and food. Find out more at madisonriverfoundation.org and click the events tab. Another fun event taking place Labor Day weekend is Paul Bunyan Days in St. Mary's, Idaho. There's going to be three days of logging competitions, motocross races, water events, a carnival, food and craft vendors, music, fireworks. Jeez, what else can you ask for? It sounds like a lot of fun. Speaking of fun, how about a horseback ride followed by some wine tasting? That's right. You can take a half-hour ride around the Kiona Vineyards in south-central Washington's Benton County, 
Saturdays and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. from now through October. The cost is only $30, and a little wine after the ride sounds, well, just pleasant. There's more information about this opportunity for riding and wine tasting at redmountaintrails.com. That's redmountaintrails.com. And looking just a little further out, Hell's Canyon Mule Days is going to be taking place in Enterprise, Oregon from September 4th through the 6th. It's a celebration of all things related to the mule and cowboy culture. This looks like it's going to be a ton of fun. In fact, I'm going this year and I hope to see you there. Find out more about this event at hellscanyonmuledays.com. While you're on the web, don't forget to go to our website. Again, that's northwesternoutdoors.com. Follow us and like us on Facebook as well at Northwestern Outdoors Radio. And don't forget to enter to win for that pair of binoculars we're giving away from Loophold. That's all for this week. Our thanks goes out again to Tia Troy at Montana Tourism's Glacier Country for logistical support on our trip to the Lee Metcalf National Wildlife Refuge. You can find out more about destinations in western Montana by going to visit Visit mt.com and then go to the Glacier Country page. There's a lot to see and do there. Labor Day weekend is coming up next weekend and with it, the end of summer for many. So until next time, take care, God bless, and make it a point to spend some time outdoors. Outdoors.